Hey guys, I'd like to provide a quick portfolio update on Giverny Capital, which is managed by Francois Rochon, um, a great value investor from Canada. And let's get right to it. Um, so the for quarter ending um, September 30, 2020, Giverny Capital had a lot of changes in general, and they and that's how they usually are. You know, there might be a lot of things in the background going on that we may not be aware of. And it's not really indicative of how they think about companies or, or those you know particular stocks. It could be simply that you know somebody's withdrawing money, they need money for that, and so they sell down or those positions. And so they in general they have a lot of uh, movement every quarter, just small movements here and there. But um, in terms of big ones, you know they, they sold down Berkshire B. Um, you know, and, and it could be because they need money, you know, to, to give somebody else who was withdrawing money because they were buying uh, Berkshire A stock. So, you know, it's the same company, but it, it, two different directions. And so that doesn't really make sense. But um, uh, so, but overall, uh, there was a bunch of sell downs. Um, and, but the, the big purchases were, you know, Amatech. Um, they, they did add to their position there. They already have a pretty sizable position, and they were adding to that. Um, they also added to CarMax. You know, they've held CarMax for uh, a bit now, and and I know they they think very very highly of CarMax, as far as I know. Um, but they another caveat that I wanted to point out is they have a lot of very very small positions, and I omitted those. Because they're so tiny, it really makes no difference on their portfolio, um, you know, in terms of percentage size. They're like million-dollar positions or, you know, 500,000 positions. So I, I excluded everything that was less than five million, but there were some really, really small positions as well. Um, <clears throat> on the next slide, you'll see some more positions that they added and subtracted from, <clears throat> you know, that. They really they feel pretty good about Heiko. They've been adding to that uh, continuously, uh, and uh, you know J.P. Morgan Chase, J.P. Morgan Chase and Bank of America are pretty sizable positions, um, and they you know they feel pretty good about their balance sheet and, and the companies in general. So they've been adding to those. Uh, I know they've been very very excited about Progressive, uh, and throughout the you know previous quarters they've been buying Progressive continuously. Um, I think since they started buying, the price went up from 60 to 100 bucks a share. So, <clears throat> you know, it would have been much better for them to make their entire purchase when it was 60. But uh, generally, given it doesn't work like that, they usually take up uh, maybe like a 1% position. You know, they think about their decision, think about the company, look at how things develop. Then they increase their position to 5% or 10%. And, and they, they, they're pretty slow on buying up and selling down, and which has worked really, really well for them. I think Giverny Capital has outperformed almost every single year, you know, the S&P 500, and they've, they've outperformed, I think, by uh, 5% um, or something like that. I think their cumulative return were about 15 to 20%, you know, ranging on what years you count. And But they've been, you know, that strategy has worked really well for them. And so I'm not the one to question, um, you know, their strategy, but I love to follow them in general. And also, Francois wrote, you know, uh, um, an update for their partners in March of 2020, just around coronavirus. Um, and he talks about, you know, it, it was the same, it was a similar kind of letter that he issued during the financial crisis where, you know, after a crisis, you know, there's a market correction, which, which in general is a 29%. And subsequently, you know, five years later, you see, um, you know, a return of around 110%. And so he writes, you know, not only the market regains, you know, the lost ground in five years, but the vast majority of the time, it, re it returns to record territory. There's a fundamental reason for it. Companies on average increase their profits by 6 to 7% per year and pay an average dividend of 2 to 3%. This has translated into a total historical annualized return of 8 to 10 percent for equities over many years. And so he talks about how, you know, stocks 
are so much more superior than bonds who almost, you know, which almost yield nothing um, at this time. And so, you know, this is a quick update for Giving Capital. Um, and I'll post that coronavirus uh, letter link uh, in the description below. Let me know if you liked the video and uh, hope to see you again.